Is that a zebra crossing you're on? <laughs> It is. This is Shabua Crossing, actually, Eamon, and it's the busiest crossing in the world. You're right. Two and a half thousand people come across the road every time the lights change here in the middle of Tokyo. I think the Prime Minister is getting a really good formal introduction to Japan. There was a tea ceremony yesterday. Uh, later, there's going to be a state banquet. She's going to get to meet the Emperor as well. She's getting to talk to all of the business leaders and all the people she needs in the uh, political and business world. But what she's not doing, perhaps, is getting that visual and sensory impact of what it's like to step out onto the streets of Tokyo here. It really hits you between the eyes and uh, it's quite incredible really because a lot of what we have at home comes from Japanese culture, the video games, those comic book characters perhaps. Of course, many people like a bit of karaoke. But we're about to show you one thing that hasn't hit the UK yet and perhaps it never will. There's the gentle introduction to Japan with a centuries-old tea ceremony. <laughs> or the now infamous robot restaurant in Tokyo. There's no better illustration of the often complex and confusing clash of cultures you're confronted with in Japan, from traditional dance, mythical figures, comic book characters, to weird and wonderful robots written by scantily clad women. My guide for the night reckons the Prime Minister might be missing out. This is part of Japanese culture, so I think you know, it would make sense for her to taste a little bit of Japanese culture. Whilst it's unlikely the PM will be sitting down to cook her own supper, she will be treated to some of the wonderful delights of Japanese cuisine. Karaoke is probably off limits, but a drink at a typical Japanese bar with a retro video console could be just the stress relief a deal hunting prime minister needs as she tries to gain a better understanding of a country that delights and befuddles you in equal measures. Pretty extraordinary. That was just a restaurant. I mean, it looked like an entire cabaret show that you'd see in Las Vegas, Richard. <laughs> um, do you think that um, Theresa May will come away with much or is it really just a sort of pressing the flesh and being present? It's certainly a getting to know you. I mean, we are hearing this morning about these cooperation deals that are being signed for uh, the military and, and to talk about defence, specifically that cybersecurity, actually, because people are really worried here and elsewhere in the world about North Korean hackers. They think they're doing an awful lot of damage to business and people's economies. But also, Ranveer, of course, people are worried about those missile launches too. And that is one thing that the Prime Minister will have been talking to Shinzo Abe about. Uh, of course, the big reason for this visit was trade, wanting to get businesses together, wanting to get some sort of deal post-Brexit. I don't think they'll get anything formal. In fact, they're not allowed to until Britain leaves the EU. But by standing next to each other, both Prime Ministers uh, are certainly uh, building themselves into a position where once Brexit has happened, perhaps they can quickly sign a deal. That's their hope, anyway. Anyway. Richard, um, if you had have been walking and talking in Manchester or Plymouth or Belfast, people would just stop and look at you. But because everybody in Japan has a camera anyway, nobody's, nobody's looking at you. You're nothing special there. <laughs> Well, I'm, I'm nothing special in Plymouth, Manchester or anywhere else, to be fair, Eamon. But you're right, actually, people take all of this, all of this in their stride. Good man, good man. Richard Gaysford reporting from the biggest zebra crossing in the whole wide world. And the fact that the cameraman didn't bump into a single human being in the busiest city, it's yeah. quite a, quite it's a feat to be walking backwards. Now, right. if the